Hey guys, how you guys doing? I ha this is my invention. This is part two. Um, I had a, done a, a video earlier uh, on centrifuge. Uh -huh. My invention is different because normally they, uh, most uh, centrifuges around the world they only have one system. My is interconnected into a series uh, that accumulates the the weight of each one. Uh, the mass accumulates the weight, accumulates also the uh, the speed and velocity. Well, actually velocity. Uh, for example, uh, this is NASA's machine. Uh, it creates 20 G's, um, that's 20 times the terrestrial gravity, basically 1 G is 1 Earth gravity, but in this case they got their machine is only uh, capable of 20 G's, and the radius 20 feet, 29 feet, and the payload is 1,200 maximum, uh, and their max is 20 G's, which is human rated at 12.5 G's. Their max RPMs are 50 RPMs, that's just one machine. Now in certain places of the world they have uh, more powerful ones, in this case, they got a large rotor or radius of 15 centimeters. Ah, but a maximum G force of 2,058 G's. Now, anyway, uh, this machine, uh, I'm going to rate it for example purposes as the same velocity as this. So, let's say this uh, centrifuge machine is uh, spinning at a gravity of 2,058 uh, Earth, Earth's G's. Uh, so, uh, so if you got a machine at 2058 and then it's interconnected with another one in series and the other one spins at the same velocity and the same G's at 2058 G's and then the same deal, all these machines additive and accumulative and they're all interconnected from one single platform but each one's got the above or, or so interconnected and each one's individually spinning, each one's got their own uh, power source and own motor so each one's individually uh, power source and motor and each one's spinning and, and adding itself to the other previous, so if this is a 2058 G's, each one's same deal spinning and same velocity uh, um, in acquiring the same G's, so 2058 G's, 2058 G's, 2058 G's, and so on. Then you multiply, in this case I only got 8, you could go 8, 10, 100, 1000 or more uh, interconnected uh, systems uh, in space or on earth uh, for a centrifuge system. And that equals to, if you got, in this case, I got eight machines interconnected. It's 2,058 Gs multiplied by eight. That equals 16, 464 Gs. So that's for this and, and the concept. Like I said, it could have more machines, unlimited. It could be here on Earth or in space. And in, in that theory, you could break the uh, speed of light. But anyway, that's the, uh, the concept. Um, now, if you have this machine spinning, you know, the spinning, at the end, you have this object, mass object. Uh, but if you have another one on this side also spinning, then you have a gap where they, they don't touch, but you have a gap on this side that's so spinning this way, and this one's spinning this way, so and the other one's spinning this way, and you have a gap in between. So what you have is uh, this. You have this right here. You have this right here. This object right here, which is this right here. So you have a gap between, see this is centrifuge system is spinning that way in series, and you have this centrifuge spinning series in that way, but then you have a gap here. In my concept, in my theory, then you create, because you have higher mass, and this, this is extremely high mass, extremely high mass for milliseconds, and very heavy, uh, we're reaching weight more than Earth itself uh, per molecule. In other words, I'm not saying it's just the same as a quarter being as heavy as a, uh, a truck or, or or higher so imagine a quarter the molecules itself and a quarter being heavier than a truck itself uh, weight wise so this is uh, acquiring more mass in their molecules and these objects so when these objects get close together you, you create a, a time displacement bubble which is right here and anyone being in that bubble in theory uh, uh, you would have uh, a time dilation, so time will slow down. So Earth, uh, time will pass normally, and this will slow down here. So if they stay here for, let's say, an example, uh, a few seconds, uh, time over here would have passed a few minutes. So let's say they stay here 10 minutes. And when they come out, it's they're actually an hour into the future. That's just, just as an example. Just like the black hole. Uh, the closer you get to a black hole, because it attracts matter, the key word attraction, attracts matter, so that attract, attract, attraction mechanism, it creates a time displacing bubble and aircraft or, or anything inside of the uh, 
gravitational field of the black hole or any closer they get to the event horizon, the more powerful um, time slows down and time slows down. So if some something able to escape the gravitational field, they would actually travel in time forward because if they spend uh, one minute in that gravitational field, it slows down and when they come out, they might be 10 years into the future because the, the more time they spend, in, spend in the gravitational field, uh, time slows down and they actually uh, slow down so everything around them is moving faster so when they come out they're in the future. So uh, that's the same concept because uh, this has mass of extreme gravitational mass. This is great, great gravitational mass. Um, just imagine the planets of the weight, planets of the weight. Just imagine that uh, Earth itself and other planets uh, bend time and spa space underneath. So you got a planet, a time bends underneath uh, the time and space. So if, if just because of the mass can do that, imagine these uh, uh, heavier objects with mass of high, heavier mass, while they spin, they become heavier molecule. So they will affect time and space. So anything in between that bubble, between these objects while they're spinning, that it might create a bubble, um, a gravitational, uh, 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 might actually uh, cause time elision bubble. And anything inside that bubble, time will slow down. How much? I have no idea. It's just my concept. But anyway, it's amazing that you could do that. Um, my invention is pretty much this machine that can break the speed of light. Uh, so if this thing is spinning at speed of light, you have another system interconnected and speed of light, and, and you add to that point, and you, you, you should be able to break the speed of light. This uh, aircraft is traveling at the speed of light, and they have this system inside, you would definitely break the speed of light. It's just a concept of um, adding speed accumulative. If they say the scientists say they can't break the speed of light, the 2,999, 792, 458 miles per second cannot be broken. Yes, he can, because this is the speed of light, in theory, in the vehicle, and you have this system inside, you can add accumulative speed to it by this centrifuge uh, hypergravity system that it's able to do that. It's basically, it's like, a, how should I say this? Um, the same vacuum. Uh, you throw a ball, right, itself in, in, in space, the, and the ball travels at 10 miles per hour. And then for some reason, imagine that ball shooting another ball, and then that second ball is going to obviously go another 10 miles in theory. So you now you have 20 mile velocity. And then say that the second ball throws another ball forward, another 10 miles velocity, a third ball. So you have a third ball going at another 10 miles. So you add those accumulative speeds, 10, 20, 30, and so on. So that object's gonna travel faster and faster and faster. Even if the velocity is the maximum at the speed of light, but uh, the concept's there. Uh, um, at least we know that it, it can work, uh, at least with this system of uh, centrifuge a hypergravity uh, um, series system. Um, that is my invention, guys. You guys have a good one. I uh, just explain in, in real short term how this thing works. Uh, I have a, a second video on the other one. You guys can check out. You guys have a good one.